Hey, this is Pastor Bungie Garrett, and I want to take some time today to present you with another word of encouragement. Well, it's the 26th day of Women's History Month, and as we continue to observe this month-long celebration of women, we should take a moment to consider the importance of godly women and their role in the church. As I pointed out just yesterday, the Lord Jesus has called every Christian, male and female, to accomplish the great commission of Christ by preaching the gospel to those who are lost, and then by discipling those who repent and trust in Jesus Christ. Now, with this as the goal, it's crucial for Christians to then look to the New Testament epistles for the doctrinal instructions that we need so that we can accomplish the great commission of Christ according to his revealed will. And with this as the goal, we do well to consider the pastoral instructions that Paul presented in the pastoral epistle that he sent to a pastor named Titus. It's actually in Titus chapter 2. There Paul presents Pastor Titus with a proper discipleship program for every church. And he did this by declaring, As for you, speak the things which are proper for sound doctrine, that the older men be sober, reverent, temperate, sound in faith, in love, in patience. The older women likewise, that they be reverent in behavior, not slanderers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they admonish the young women to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, homemakers, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God may not be blasphemed. Likewise, exhort the young men to be sober-minded in all things, showing yourself to be a pattern of good works, in doctrine, showing integrity, reverence, incorruptibility, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that one who is an opponent may be ashamed, having nothing evil to say of you. Now here in these verses, we find Paul, he's helping Pastor Titus to understand that when it comes to the discipleship aspect of the Great Commission, mature Christian men should be discipling the younger guys in the church as mature Christian women disciple the younger gals. And from this, we can see then that the Lord has an incredible plan for raising up every believer to become a part of this discipleship program. And this includes raising up godly women in church leadership. And, and listen, as a pastor, I believe that every healthy church will employ a discipleship program which includes men discipling younger men and women discipling younger women. At the same time, it's also important for us to realize that there are many in the church today who are now distorting this discipleship directive by insisting that the Lord is also calling women to now become lead pastors over flocks. For example, I want to consider the opinion of Ashley Wilkerson, and Wilkerson assures us that she is a lead pastor at Pacific Coast Church in Tacoma, Washington. Ashley recently presented a message titled, Lead Like a Woman. And it was during that message when she distorted several definitions of words in order to exalt women to the position of, you know, the powerful deliverer of men. She also candidly confessed that she spent most of her life despising the way that women are presented in Proverbs chapter 31. Not only that, but she also commiserated with the women who despise Proverbs 31. And, and, and you know, uh, just to be clear, Proverbs 31 presents us with God's perfect plan for the women who want to live like godly gals. Ladies, listen, if you take issue with the content found in Proverbs 31, then you also take issue with God's perfect plan for the role of women. Well, rather than joyful em joyfully embracing God's design for female disciples, Pastrix Ashley Wilkerson, she went on to twist the scriptures by insisting that the Lord Jesus actually appointed female apostles who were then renamed by the patriarchy in order to hide this fact. Here's how she explains it during this message, and I quote, Prisca, Mary, Phoebe, Junia, Tryphena, and Tryphosa, their names are my favorite to say, many others that were apostles, leaders in the early church, some of which their names have been changed in scripture because we understood, we thought, oh no, they can't be women apostles. Yeah, they were. I'm not telling you this so you distrust scripture. I'm not talking about that. I'm calling you to dig deeper because sometimes it gets muddled in our culture. Okay, so according to this so-called pastor, 
The Bible was changed by men who were trying to protect the patriarchy, and with this as their devious scheme, they changed the names of the female apostles so that they could keep women from becoming pastors. Gotcha. Okay, Pastrix Wilkerson, uh, she wants us to believe that the Lord allowed the scriptures to be altered the, uh, and changed by insecure men who were trying to stop women from taking their jobs. Now listen, if Ashley is correct, then we shouldn't trust the Bible at all. Conversely, if the Bible is accurate, then we should not trust Ashley. And listen, I can assure you that Ashley is wrong and, and the Bible is in fact accurate. And in order to make my case, let's consider the biblical requirements for the apostolic office. It's actually found in Acts chapter 1. There we find the apostles preparing to replace Judas. And with this as the goal, the apostle Peter declares this, we must choose a replacement for Judas from among the men who were with us the entire time we were traveling with the Lord Jesus, from the time he was baptized by John until the day he was taken from us. Whoever is chosen will join us as a witness of Jesus' resurrection. So they nominated two men, Joseph, called Barsabbas, also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed, O Lord, you know every heart. Show us which of these men you have chosen as an apostle to replace Judas in the ministry, for he has deserted us and gone where he belongs. Then they cast lots, and Matthias was selected to become an apostle with the other eleven. Now here in these verses we find Peter, he's presenting the requirements for the apostolic office, and the first requirement he presented was that this position was specifically for men. And it's for this reason that they looked to the godly men to replace Judas. Simply put, the twelve apostles were all men. And what's even more is that there are no early manuscripts of the scriptures that present us with any female apostles. Therefore, when Ashley Wilkerson assures us that the scriptures were changed in order to hide the apostolic calling of certain women, she's using her platform simply to deceive those who are sitting under her so-called leadership. And it's sad to say that, you know, many churches are happy to allow these feminists to lead people astray according to these unbiblical beliefs. Now, without debate, there are many women in the Bible who accomplished great things in the name of the Lord. Time would fail me to present a list of these women and the incredible faith that they demonstrated as they served the Lord. Not only that, but there should be no doubt that the Lord is calling godly women to become leaders in the church today. And with this as the goal, I encourage all Christian women to consider the leadership role that Paul defined within the discipleship directives that we find in the pastoral epistles. This, of course, includes the clear instructions found in Titus chapter 2, where mature Christian women are instructed to disciple the younger gals so that they might become teachers who are able to instruct the next generation of women according to the church-age doctrines that we find in the New Testament epistles. Listen, rather than trying to make a biblical case for female pastors from women like Deborah and Miriam, uh, we do better to grasp the role of women in the church from the pastoral epistles, which clearly present us with the instructions for the church age. And while I realize that the biblical position uh, that we find in the New Testament epistles will ruffle the feathers of feminists, it's important for us to remember that God's ways are higher than our ways and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Why did God appoint men to the office of apostle rather than women? Why did God create the position of pastor to be filled by men and not women? Why does God call men to lead the family and not women? Listen, I don't know that I have a great answer for these questions, and yet this is precisely what the Lord has revealed in his holy word. And with that being the case, those who trust in the Lord should also then trust that his plan is perfect. With this as the goal, I encourage every Christian, uh, let's take part in the Great Commission. And, and at the same time, we should also take part in the Great Commission and, and accomplish this calling according to the instructions that we find in the pastoral epistles. And then as we submit to the perfect will of the Lord, he will help us to become those believers who are fighting the good fight of faith and all for the glory of God.